all and welcome back. A lot to cover again in today's video. Let's do a quick market recap of what we've seen so far over the last couple of weeks. And then of course, a more specific deep dive into Hedera. As there's a lot of news that's been released as of late. 18 days ago, Jim Cramer said Bitcoin is unlikely to find its footing. And that's after we saw a rather large pullback take place after those spot Bitcoin ETFs went live. Since that particular tweet, it's almost as if Jim himself Mark the bottom, 20% up for Bitcoin. Now, of course, majority of altcoins, though, are bleeding out against Bitcoin as we currently speak. And that is to be expected as we see the altcoin dominance begin to fall. More interestingly, though, looking at those spot Bitcoin ETFs in particular, BlackRock has said that Bitcoin has created a global Internet value that allows assets to move at low cost and in near real time access across borders. And of course, we all know and love the reasons for holding cryptocurrency, but BlackRock and Fidelity are now holding nearly 152,000 Bitcoins themselves, worth over 7.16 billion for their spot Bitcoin ETFs. And of course, there were nine other spot Bitcoin ETF providers as well that have been continually buying spot Bitcoin from the market. Clearly showing that there is evident demand there amongst different retail and other institutions. Not only that, we are just 10,000 blocks away now from the Bitcoin halving taking place, which estimated time is somewhere around 66 days, coinciding with spring of this year. The predicted date being around 18th of April this year. As we've seen in the past, whenever a halving takes place is a very good signal for the sort of almost start or a confirmation point for a bull market rally to take place. Some may say that this started at the beginning of 2024, but what's really good or interesting to see about the Bitcoin halving is it appears to be coinciding with the likes of macroeconomic pressure as well, downscaling compared to what we've seen over the last one to two years. All in all, these could these factors could all contribute towards a very large bull market rally taking place throughout the latter half of 2024, potentially crossing over into 2025. As always, though, there is a ton of volatility here and we'll have to see how that plays out. Jumping into Hedera's news then more specifically, there's a load of stuff, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. First things first is we have a new council member. So Hedera are excited to announce that Hitachi US has joined the Hedera Council, bringing with it industrial solutions, expertise and the aim to begin creating proof of concepts for end-to-end supply chain and sustainability solutions in the next year. Of course, we've seen tons of different supply chain and sustainability solutions already be developed on top of Hedera. Think no further than Atma.io. We saw the Kia and um, Hyundai release as well for them looking to use uh, supply chain tooling against Hedera's ledger in order to ensure that it is robust. Hitachi US offers a broad range of products and solutions in electronics, healthcare, energy, internet of things, and more throughout the Americas. As a leader in development of innovation-led industry use cases, Hitachi is a unique and valuable addition to the Hedera Governing Council. And Hedera themselves look forward to seeing how Hitachi US's extensive experience, being industrial expertise as well as technical capabilities, can strengthen the Hedera network and further demonstrate the transformative real-world potential of Web3. So again, this is very exciting and of course, good news anyway for the Hedera network as we take further steps forward to having a complete governing council board. Some large updates from SourceSwap Labs then that I wanted to cover as they impact everyone that's using the uh, platform itself. So development update in the commitment to always approving SourceSwap. We've been hard at work this week on various developments summary of our latest accomplishments on the back end they've released some more api updates um, identified and resolved the root cause of a data discrepancy in auto pool tvl figures implementing graceful fallback mechanisms for the stats endpoint to mitigate intermittent data inconsistencies enabled the paralyzed lari reward hourly calculation job to run in production broadening its potential applications optimize source buyback scripts to include previously excluded pools i'll touch on that in a minute submitted Brewer Source V2 for audits. On the front end as well, though, they've deployed a fully functional auto pool feature to the development environment. Uh, it's currently in a testing phase, expanded comprehensive data and functionality for auto pools across liquidities 
uh, position specific and portfolio pages in development, transition farm totals to smart contract calls from the front end uh, for individual pages, adjusted code to accommodate aliased accounts, improved SEO through optimized canonical tags and uh, on swap and liquidity pages, and then drafted initial wallet connect pull requests. So there's tons of different stuff that they've been working on behind the scenes. Many of you may not even notice these changes, but they are effectively just quality of life improvements for the end user, which of course is always a beneficial thing. They're excited about the upcoming new features and optimizations, including auto pools, wallet connect integration, updates to Lari and more. Don't forget, I did cover in a video not too long ago, they are looking at releasing Source Swap Pro as well at some point, as well as some rumors that we'll soon be seeing Source and the Dovu token itself go live on some centralized exchanges, which of course will probably bolster demand for these two particular tokens, these HTS tokens. As I said, I wanted to quickly touch on that buyback optimization announcement. So they did do a separate tweet saying they are proud to announce the optimization for Source buyback systems integral to single-sided staking rewards now include previously excluded pools. We then saw, I think, the largest buyback we'd seen to date of nearly 890,000 source tokens, which is around 74,000 US dollars got bought back. And as a direct result of them including these previously excluded pools um, into the buyback system, we have seen the APR for source single-sided staking effectively do something like a 10x. I think it was roughly at 2 3%. It's now somewhere between 20 to 30% APR return, which is a massive difference from what we've been seeing for the native HBAR token itself. Of course, there are other inherent risks of holding source tokens as opposed to say HBAR, and it's all down to opportunity cost and as well, how well the project will do into the future. So make sure you are doing your own research, but of course with single-sided staking, you don't have to worry about liquidity positions, impermanent loss, etc. You just kind of stake your tokens and you receive that APR. Quite interestingly, I've had a few different comments as well about the HBAR uh, staking return currently that we see. Obviously, many people find my older videos when we had really high um, sort of bolstered rates from the likes of the HBAR Foundation. I believe the average APR or APY is somewhere around 05 to 0.7%. So it is significantly lower than what we had seen previously. In fact, a really good way to check that and that I like to use is going to the Stada Hedera website. And yes, they add um, a small amount of HBAR per epoch, but they display uh, an APR, an equivalent APR on their particular page for native HBAR staking. Now, of course, remember that state uh, staking amount will always be slightly higher. So take that figure and then take off maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3% based on how much they're adding. But that gives you a ballpark figure of the live um, HBAR yield that we are currently experiencing on the network. As I said, I believe it's around 06 to 0.7% currently. Some more interesting news though about Equity Lab and AI Integrity Suites being evaluated in Accenture's AI Lab in Brussels to see if the software could be scaled to serve the firm's thousands of clients, many of them whom are Fortune 100. So Accenture is a massive um, a global consultancy firm. Responsible AI from Equity Lab is of course being built on top of Hedera. Again, this is something very big and could be an enormous use case, particularly from a company that is serving many Fortune 100 companies globally. Something like this is definitely worth keeping an eye out for, and I will cover any updates off the back of this in future videos. Astronova, which I believe I touched on quite a while ago now, dubbing themselves, of course, as a quadruple A game, deserves a triple A website. Behold our new website, your gateway to mystery, action, story, and the heart of the our gaming system, welcome to astronova.world. These guys are, of course, building on top of Hedera, powered by Hedera and the Unreal Engine. And of course, they've now got a new website that's live. You guys can go check that out whenever you wish. I thought I'd cover this. This was a great tweet by Zepsi himself. Um, Charles Atkins actually started this thread, so many people forget or just never knew. And this goes for any of you that are new to Hedera, that Lehman Baird, did his PhD focused in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks. So of course, we're always thinking about these areas and how they can be supercharged using Hedera. Of course, Lehman himself being the inventor of Hashgraph, he solved the Byzantine generals problem and blockchain trilemma, did his PhD in AI and machine learning, not cryptography. His PhD was the fastest in Carnegie Mellon history, and Hedera Hashgraph was an equation he solved for fun. In short, Lehman Baird is actually probably a genius. And of course, we have him to thank for Hedera itself. 
Interesting uh, tweet here from the HBAR Foundation, and I'll cover the article in just a second, but the merging of traditional finance and decentralized finance is inevitable with teams like Arcax EX leading the way on Hedera. Shane Higdon caught up with Kitco News now to discuss the benefits of Web3 tokenization for financial institutions. Real world asset tokenization is something that I've touched on many different times um, in my particular videos because they are very, very important. But looking at the sort of summary of this particular web page, I will leave this link down in the description, is that you know most people are believing that financial assets will eventually be represented digitally on the blockchain. It's far cheaper. It lowers barriers to entry. There are numerous different reasons why. Um, further to this, you've got real world assets, including fractional ownership, increased liquidity, as well as wider access. Not only that, they are a key driver for mainstream adoption of blockchain and cryptocurrencies, particularly at the institutional level. Tokenization as well can revolutionize asset ownership across various sectors like real estate, art and commodities. They also create new markets for themselves as well uh, with fractional ownership. At the moment, fractional ownership in something like a piece of art, real estate or um, certain types of commodities is very, very difficult with traditional finance systems that exist today. Real world asset tokenization as well does hinge on streamlined regulations, robust infrastructure and development, as well as innovations for scalability and security. Now, Hedera does already tick the box for majority of those, if not all of those different points there, which are sort of pivotal points for mass adoption to take place. So Hedera is in very, very good stead moving forward into the future to take advantage of this transition that traditional finance will undergo to move towards real world asset tokenization going forward into the future. Anyway, hopefully that brings you guys up to speed with the news from the cryptocurrency markets and Hedera more at large. Feel free to drop a like if you did enjoy this video. You can leave a comment. I do try and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And you can always subscribe to be notified for my future uploads. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.